Hey folks, welcome back. In today's installment of Vertex Operator Algebras, we are going to continue our discussions of structures within algebras by looking at those who can be viewed as products of two Lie algebras. Confusingly, the direct product of two Lie algebras has the vector space structure of a direct sum. To define the algebraic structure, we must define the Lie bracket. To that end, the individual subalgebras retain their original Lie algebra structure, of course, and any cross brackets between two subalgebras must vanish. It is the simplest possible way to combine two Lie algebras. From the perspective of particle physics, the direct product of Lie algebras has the structure of kind of like hidden sector models, wherein there are two sets of gauge theories, one sequestered from the other, as might happen, say, in some D brain constructions where different spectra lay on different stacks of brains or whatever. Of course, the only reason those hidden sector models are even of interest is because they can, at some point, interact via messenger particles. At the very least, these messenger particles might be gravitons. But you could also imagine something akin to Jonathan Fang and Jason Kumar's famous wimpless miracle mechanism. In that case, of course, quantum effects give rise to interactions between sectors via renormalization. So it certainly behooves us to consider how such product algebras might interact or grow more complicated. Of course, this example is just to kind of whet the appetite. Our first step in that direction will be considerably less profound. And that step is semi-direct products. To form more complicated products, we need more complicated rules. A different set of rules for cross-bracket products would define a different algebraic structure. We will consider one set of rules that afford an action of one factor algebra upon the other, a sort of one-way non-trivial product. As before, let G and H be Lie algebras. And, as before, consider the vector space direct sum of G with H. For this case, let us suppose that there is an algebra homomorphism, pi, from G to the endomorphisms of H. If G and H were the same algebra, this could be the adjoint map, for example. In any case, the very existence of such a map implies some sort of compatibility between G and H as Lie algebras. We can then define the cross bracket, the Lie bracket with some a from G and some b from H, as the action of pi of a on b. With this Lie bracket structure, the associated Lie algebra is called the semi-direct product of G and H. Evidently, H is an ideal of this new algebra. There are a number of different ways to think about this structure. First, any Lie algebra that can be written as a direct sum of a subalgebra and an ideal can be written like a semi-direct product. Alternatively, a semi-direct product is an extension of the subalgebra, in this case A, by some ideal, in this case B. So we can write out the appropriate short exact sequence. This type of extension is often called split, or trivial. Notice that the notation picks out the ideal. Let's step out of line very quickly to talk about some familiar structures in physics. This isn't a perfect fit, as we'll be talking about Lie groups, but the main idea hopefully comes across. Consider the set of orthogonal matrices in n dimensions, On. These matrices correspond to the global isometries of Rn, and can be thought of as those matrices whose transpose is equal to their inverse. Now, more familiar than On is perhaps Son, the special orthogonal group. These are the orthogonal matrices of determinant 1, they correspond to local isometries of a real Riemannian manifold. ON is related to SON via a semi-direct product structure, wherein the subgroup of reflections, say Z2, is adjoined to SON. When considering semi-direct products, often we'll see a structure where a smaller subalgebra is adjoined to a bigger ideal to give some effect. As a technical note, both SON and ON have the same Lie algebra of n by n anti-symmetric matrices. So the semi-direct product in this case emerges as a consequence of the global structure of the Lie groups, rather than the local structure of the Lie algebra. We will have much more to say on the relationship between Lie groups and Lie algebras much further down the road. A common example of the semi-direct product structure might seem silly at first, but will be used extensively in what follows. Given some Lie algebra G and a derivation D on G, we can extend the one-dimensional Lie algebra FD with G, as the derivation is clearly a map from G to its endomorphisms. In the Lie algebra of polynomials in some variable x, this could be seen as allowing the derivative d by dx to be included by linear combination. 
So let's see that with a more concrete example. Let A be an associative algebra with a derivation D, and form the natural Lie algebra over A using commutators. Then adjoin D to A. Let's look at the commutators for this new Lie algebra. Of course, D commutes with itself, so the only real novel bracket to consider is given by the commutator of D with A, probably acting on some B. A short bit of computation demonstrates that the commutator D with A times B is equal to D of A times B, as the other terms cancel out. So let's see how this plays out for the specific case of polynomials in a formal variable T. For that associative algebra, which is also commutative, we adjoin the derivation by the derivative d by dt. Clearly, this is also an algebra, and we can consider polynomials not only of t, but also of d by dt. Note that it is no longer commutative. Indeed, we can compare this to the algebra of canonically conjugate variables in quantum mechanics, particularly in the so-called Schrodinger picture. And that's our show! Next time, we'll describe a new kind of structure on algebras by considering so-called graded algebras. Thank you.